Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time of year again. Brugmas is back for year number three. Count them. One, two, three. That's, that's four. Three. Three years. So for this Brugmas, I'm going to be going over levels 70 through 85. So 15 levels in a row. And I'm going to be uploading every day. Every single day, there'll be a Brugly video. Y'all can catch them, watch them whenever. It's going to be amazing. You all know how it works. Thank you so much for another great year here on the Brugly channel. We've done so much this year. We had a million subs. We got a plushie, which is which is over there. We got the Sprugly's growing. Y'all are amazing. I cannot wait to see where we go next year as we explore more and more into the back rooms and other stuff too. Thank you so much. I love and appreciate you all. I cannot believe I've done this for three years now. Three years is crazy. If you all enjoy Brugmas, leave a like. It greatly helps the algorithm see that uh, my channel is doing well. And uh, with all that said and done, sit back and relax and enjoy the first episode of Brugmas right now. Let's get into it, shall we? Absolutely no clickbait or over-exaggerated title or thumbnail for this video because this backrooms level is genuinely just a classic one. It's liminal and it reminds me of a 2020 backrooms fandom type of level. Today, I'll be explaining level 70. Grab your hot cocoa, your warmest blanket, turn on the Christmas tree, and let's get into it, shall we? Backrooms level 70 is the 71st level in the catalog, and it takes the appearance of a huge depot-like sprawl of hallways and rooms and corridors. It's been classified as a class one difficulty for being safe and secure, but with a minimal entity count. Overall, it's actually one of the safer levels in the 70s range, because some of these are about to get crazy, but this one is relatively safe. The level's depot rooms are connected via brick and concrete hallways, and the entire level has this smell of dust in the air. It just feels and smells and has this vibe of abandonment. The main hallway of the level is lined with storage containers on each side, each of which are labeled with a number from 0 to 999. Those numbers will come into play later. You'll start at the beginning of that main hallway, and from that hall, the level will shoot off into numerous other hallways and rooms, and all of which go out for a long time. Some of the halls have random doors that can either be opened or closed or locked, but all of these doors have a really dusty and abandoned vibe, just like the rest of the level. The storage containers in this level are the only places that aren't completely empty, because most of the hallways and the rooms and stuff are empty with nothing else in them. But these storage containers have stuff inside. The storage rooms themselves are very enigmatic, and they have several strange properties. One of them is that whoever opens the storage unit actually matters, because the items inside of the storage unit will appear and be from that person's childhood. For example, if you had a childhood doll or a game or a basketball or something that you used a lot as a kid, and you open up one of these storage units, it might appear in a box inside of it. And these objects are going to be very nostalgic, and they're going to give you these feelings of your childhood, but you shouldn't touch and you shouldn't interact with any of them in any way, because these objects have been classified as something called nostalgia traps. Nostalgia traps are areas or rooms or more specifically objects in random levels that seem to possess parts of Wanderer's childhood. These places and objects are used to lure these wanderers into themselves and trap them and eventually consume them for food or whatever other reason. We don't really understand it. Even if you just touch one of these objects or walk into a nostalgia trap room, you might become a victim of that nostalgia trap. Not every one of these containers is a trap, though, and that's exactly why it's really dangerous to open up a bunch of random doors here, because you genuinely just don't know which ones are which. So to play it safe, try not to open a storage crate if you can help it. So besides these concrete hallways, random storage halls, and all these office rooms spread out, there's not much else here, to be honest. This level really isn't infinite, and it seems to be confined to a few miles in size, but in these miles of hallways, there are a few entities that you might have to worry about while you're running around and exploring. The main entity that stalks the halls here are dullers and then skin stealers. You might see a death moth or two inside a storage locker if you open it. But dullers are strange, gray-skinned humanoids that have no prominent features. They're usually very shy and very skittish, and they actually run away 
after anything makes noise. So if you see one and they like slap your hands together, they'll run away. But they're actually more dangerous when you can't see them. And that's because of the method they use to hunt prey, which is you. You are the prey. They hunt by being in a hallway that is parallel to the hallway that you're in. And they'll wait until you're next to them on the other side of that hallway. And then they will no clip one of their arms through the wall that's separating you and it. And then they'll subdue you and grab you and drag you back through that wall to its side of the wall and then consume you. I just said wall probably 500 times, my bad. And obviously that's really dangerous for this specific level because this entire level is hallways that parallel each other. Like that is the entire area of this level. It is hallways that go side by side with storage lockers and offices. So dollars are very dangerous. But if you want to scare off a dollar, you just got to look at it because they're little scaredy eggs and run from you. But you need to also be aware if you can slightly hear anything paralleling you across the wall from you. The other entities here are the skin stealers and death moths, which I won't go into because you already know about them probably. And if you don't, you're a fake fan. But those are the three entities that you will see in this level. Just make sure you be careful when walking around. That way you don't get grabbed by an interdimensional arm and dragged back through a hallway. There are no bases and no outposts inside of this depot. And if you want to enter the level, you can only access it by being on level two and finding a door labeled number 70, walking through that door, and you will end up in that main storage room hallway of this level. And to exit, you can open up one of the strange storage doors that has a number from 0 to 999, and you'll have a small chance of being sent to the level that corresponds with that number. But it's pretty rare, but it does work enough to where you could try it. I mean, theoretically, you could skip from level 70 all the way to 999 if you get lucky, so I would try it. But the easier way and more consistent way of exiting this concrete hallway level is to walk to the end of that main depot hallway, find a blue door, open it up, and then you'll walk to the next level, level 71. But I honestly don't know if I would recommend this because 71 is quite dangerous. And speaking of level 71, I will see you all tomorrow with that explanation. That's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed it so much. I really love this level. It is so nostalgic. It's so simple. Just an expansive depot room with storage lockers, offices, and strange backrooms entities. You can't get any better than that. Leave a like for Brugmas if you are hyped that it's back. I'm hyped that it's back. Obviously, I love this time of year. Hope you all do too. And I hope you're also having a great December so far. Love and appreciate you all so much, more than you know. And with all that said, I will catch you tomorrow for the next installment of Brugmas and the explanation of Level 71.